In a previous video, I talked about the Fuji mid-range zoom, so the uh, 50 to uh, 230, 55 to 200, and um, that was something that a lot of people were very interested in because I think a lot of people want to have those focal ranges somewhere between 50 and 2 to 300. What I'm doing here today is taking things a little st a stage further. So if you know this channel, if you've followed me before, if you've followed what's going on, uh, last year, in fact around about this time last year, I had an injury on my wrist uh, which has given me a tendonitis. It's a long-term condition and it means that I cannot hold the 100 to 400 mil lens and so instead the option there is let's use the 70 to 300 lens instead so I bought one of those and I've been using it for the past year uh, and I wanted to do uh, a, a, a good review of these lenses because I haven't seen something so far that gives you kind of a really clear indication of the sorts of differences that you will have when you're using these lenses. There's a lot of people out there who will say, okay, the 100 to 400, if you need that extra reach, then go for that lens. But there's a lot of other considerations, weight, of course, being one of them, that you don't really see. And what's the difference between, you know, uh, the 400 and 300? What's the actual, what does it actually look like? If I take an image at 300 mil, is it actually going to be so much more uh, uh, zoomed out that, that that 400, that extra 100 mil, mil reach is going to make so much of a difference? Well, today we're going to find out. This is, and I can't really call it the, the Fuji lens off because I did that last time. So this is the great Fuji zoom off. Okay, so let's talk about what's going to happen in the field test portion of this video. I'm starting off with the 70 to 300 because it happened to be the lens that was on the camera at the time. I'm going to shoot in as low an aperture as possible because we want to see how sharp it is at the, the, with the widest open uh, um, aperture. Uh, it's also blisteringly cold today, so uh, I don't want to do this shoot for too long. Uh, I'm going to do 70 mil. I'm going to focus on the, um, there's a folly down there. Now, this folly, it's a brilliant little place. I've got the folly, my car's down there as well. And we're still a fair amount of a, a way away, but you'll see from the pictures that we get here, even as far as I am back now, this 70 mil, you still can't get the whole folly in. It's that's pretty amazing. So I'm going to do this focused on the folly at 70 at 300 and then focused on the car at 70 at 300. Okay, so starting with the lens all the way out, I'm going to take a picture there. Then we're going to go all the way, zoom into there, 300 mil. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to focus on the top tower of the folly. Um, and the reason for that is because I want to try and match these shots up as closely as possible. So we'll take another shot there. And now for the car, because I don't just want this uh, to be on that, I want to, to show you a, uh, a, a thing in the distance and then a thing close to you as well. So start off with the car and then all the way in at 300 and that's done. Now we're going to move on to the 100 to 400. So those of you who've never used the 100 to 400 before might be surprised that I put the lens on the, the thing first, but this lens is so heavy that you actually have to because uh, the, the lens can hold the camera better than the camera can hold the lens. You're putting too much strain on the joints there. So that's something that you might want to consider if you ever decide to use this lens. Also, these, these it's massive. It's really big. Uh, however, picture from this is just stunning. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Take it at 100 mil, unlock this. Uh, now the pictures aren't going to be uh, completely, precisely, accurately perfect, uh, but I'm going to do my best to make everything as close as possible to what we want, if I can undo this tripod. <laughs> okay, first shot. Second shot at 400. First shot on the car. Second shot on the car. All right, so that's the field test done. Now we have to get these back into the computer to see what they actually look like. It was far too cold out there, so it's a real pleasure to be back in a nice, warm, heated studio for the next bit. Although we did lose electricity and heat for three days, so that wasn't pleasant. Coldest snaps in the UK. Anyway, one of the big questions that I wanted to answer in this video, what do you miss going from 400 to 300? 
And I suppose I wanted to put my mind at rest, because I'm in a position now where I have to switch whether I want to or not. Well, here we have two images side by side. I'm not going to spend too long on these. This is 70 and 100 mil. And you can see the 100 mil is cropped in closer already. And then here's the same thing with the car. So if you're interested in that end of the focal range, there you go. I don't want to dwell on this one too much because what I'm really interested in is the other end of the zoom range. And the best way to show you that is the car pics. Now you can see that even though there is a pronounced zoom with the 400, it's not quite as pronounced as it would have been between 200 and 300. Nevertheless, for wildlife, that 400 mil is significant. The only way that you could get close to it on the 70 to 300 is with a teleconverter, which loses you a stop of light in the process. But the 70 to 300 has a little bit of a trick up its sleeve, and that's in the sharpness. If we zoom in, you can see the image from the 70 to 300 is just a bit sharper than the 100 to 400. Lenses at the top of their focal range can actually lose a little bit of clarity, and that seems to be what's happening with the 400mm here. Although it's worth noting that we're really zooming into this image more so than you would if you were just doing a crop for wildlife. Uh, you wouldn't normally do this. So if you could make a more significant crop at 300mm, and you've got AI sharpening and enhancement tools, does that negate some of the benefits of the 400mm focal range? Well, not really, because the 100 to 400 is slightly faster in situations where lens speed is very important. Other than that, there really isn't much to tell these two apart. Their tracking and performance is phenomenal. The focus speeds are fantastic. They both have the 5 meter lock option for when you don't want your lens to focus on stuff that's too close to it. Um, and the image quality is the best that I've seen from any of the other Fuji zoom lenses that I've used. They also both perform well on the new 40 megapixel sensors, which I think is pretty important. I've loved the 100 to 400 mil, and I'm going to be really sad to see it go. But with the 70 to 300, I feel that I've got a lens that will let me keep shooting wildlife without really compromising on the quality of the shots. Ultimately, the major decision comes down to weight and price. If, like me, you just can't handle the 100 to 400 mil lens, the 70 to 300 really is your only option. If you can't afford around what 900 pound for a second hand 100 to 400, the 70 to 300 is coming in a few hundred pounds less. But if you're really serious about wildlife, the 100 to 400 has to be the staple lens for Fuji users to get, or at least it has been for some time, because Fuji have just released the 150 to 600. Now, this is a lens that I'm probably never, ever going to get to use. It's 230 grams heavier than the 100 to 400. I just could not manage it. This is the first, though, of what feels like a professional Fuji zoom lens for wildlife at an affordable budget, coming in at around about £2,000. It's bigger, but it's focused on providing the best wildlife experience. Although it caps out around about X, F8 towards the higher end of the focal range, it's likely to be a real game changer. And I think that puts the 100 to 400 in a bit of an odd place. The 70 to 300 is the perfect all round action lens. It's light, it's reliable, it's fast. It's got phenomenal image quality. The 150, the 150 to 600 promises to be the, the dedicated wildlife photographer's go-to kit. Perhaps there just isn't room for the 100 to 400 anymore. And I'd love to know what you think about that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And thank you ever so much for watching the video. Hope you've had a, a good time watching it. Enjoyed yourself and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep taking those photos.